Hello students, this is Ankit Joshi. I welcome you all on another episode of Coffee with Concepts. So students, today's topic is distortionless transmission. So this is a very important topic from signal set system. And yes, this is seen as an application from Fourier transform. So let us start. Distortionless transmission. So let me first explain you what is this distortionless transmission system. Now, there is a signal x of t which is fed to this system which this system is named as distortionless transmission system. I will explain you why this is called as distortionless transmission and the corresponding output is y of t. Now see here students what we expect we are expecting we are expecting that the originality of the signal should remain should remain at the end of the process also. It means signal once processed through the system its originality should not be lost. So when a signal x of t is passed through a distortionless transmission system, we allow two types of operations on the signals, amplitude scaling and time delay. If these two operations are applied on the input signal and no other operation is applied on the input signal, then that system is referred as distortionless transmission system. We will just go through this statement. For distortionless transmission through an LTI system, we require exact input at the output. That is what I said originality of the signal should be maintained. So even if our signal has gone through two such operations like amplitude scaling or time delay, we will say that distortion has not happened on the signal. So two operations which are permitted under distortionless transmission system are amplitude scaling and time delay. So no other operations. Time delay means here we mean to say time shifting. So amplitude scaling and time shifting is allowed and no other operation is allowed here. Now see, we will derive an input output relation in a distortionless transmission system to better understand the process. Here output y of t is k times x of t minus td. Now if you observe this td, this td is the amount of delay. It means this signal x of t has undergone some has undergone some shifting operation and also some amplitude scaling. So this k corresponds to amplitude scaling. And this td corresponds to time delay. It means we can clearly say that our input signal x of t has undergone two operations. One is the time delay, another is the amplitude scaling. You can see here k is the amplitude scaling factor, td is the amount of delay. Now, I will explain mathematically its aspect. See, we have, say, we have said that two operations are allowed under distortionless transmission. Number one is time delay, number two is amplitude scaling. So, y of t will be k times x of t minus td. If I take Fourier transform both sides, let us say Fourier transform y of t is y of omega. k remains constant and Fourier transform of x of t minus t. Now as we all are aware that Fourier transform of a time delayed signal is e raised to minus j omega t d multiplied by Fourier transform of x of t that is nothing but x of t. So this is the input output relation y of t equal to k times x of t minus td. With the help of this input output relation, we have come to this step. Now, if I divide both sides by x of omega, then I will get k times e raised to minus j omega t. Now, students, y of omega upon x of omega is nothing but This is nothing but h of omega, what is called as the frequency response. So frequency response is k times e raised to minus j omega t. So this is the frequency response of a distortionless transmission system. k represents the amplitude scaling factor and this td represents the amount of delay. Now we will mathematically further interpret this and derive the relationship for phase and amplitude response. 
So frequency response of a distortionless transmission system. X of t is the input. Let us say its Fourier transform is x of omega. Y of t is the output. Let us say its Fourier transform is y of omega. And h of t is the impulse response. Its Fourier transform is h of omega. Now, we just derived that h of omega is k times e raised to minus g omega t. This we have derived on the previous frame. So, any any frequency response can be split into two parts. One is the magnitude part, another is the phase part. So we have derived that h of omega equal to a times e raised to minus j omega t d. And we can split this h of omega into two parts. One is the magnitude part, that is the amplitude part, and another is the phase part. On comparing both sides, we come to the conclusion that h of omega magnitude will be k and theta omega will be minus omega td. No, just go to this. So this is an important conclusion. I'll just show you this. Just hide myself. Now please see here. We can clearly say that h of omega is a constant k. So when you plot this h of omega against frequency, see this first graph, you will get the magnitude spectrum and we can conclude that magnitude spectrum is a constant value. Magnitude spectrum is a parallel line, parallel to omega axis. So when magnitude spectrum is constant, we can say that there is a distortionless transmission. On the other hand, theta omega when plotted against omega, you will get phase spectrum. See the second graph. In this you can clearly say that theta omega is having a linear characteristic with a slope of minus td. Minus td is the slope. So phase response must be linear and magnitude response must be constant. So these are the two, these are the two characteristics required for distortionless transmission system. Magnitude response must be constant. That is h of omega magnitude equal to k. Phase response must be linear, see the second graph and this is the mathematical relation theta omega equals to minus omega t. Comfortable? Now let us discuss the amplitude distortion. So all my dear students, what do you mean by amplitude distortion? There are many frequency components present in the input signal. If all the frequency components present in the input signal are amplified by one common gain factor, then amplitude distortion will not be present. That is, amplitude distortion will be absent. What I said, there are many frequency components in the input signal X of t. When that signal X of t is passed through a system, then it will undergo some amplitude changes. So, if all the frequency components present in the input signal are amplified by one common gain factor, then amplitude distortion will be absent. Okay. So, in distortionless transmission, the magnitude response is constant. It means all the frequencies will be multiplied by one common gain factor, that is that constant value. So, whenever we have a distortionless transmission system, magnitude response is constant and hence amplitude distortion is absent. But when there is a system in which amplitude distortion is not constant, in that case, there will be different frequencies multiplied by different different gain factors and hence this will lead to amplitude distortion at the output. Just go through this. See the second point, when amplitude response of a system is constant, then amplitude distortion is absent. When amplitude response of a system is not constant, in that case, amplitude distortion is present. That's what we have discussed. Now, let us discuss about phase distortion. Now, 
as i already said that an input signal is having multiple frequency components now when all these frequency components are delayed by one common phase in that case there will not be any phase distortion but when different frequencies are delayed by different different phase values in that case there will be phase distortion so i mean to say when we have distortionless transmission system we have a linear phase we have a linear phase response when there is a linear phase response phase distortion will be absent but in case of non linear phase response there will be phase distortion so once again i repeat what is phase distortion my input signal is having many frequency components now this input signal is allowed to pass through a system this system will allow some changes in the delay now different different frequencies present in the input signal if all these frequencies are delayed by one common delay factor in that case phase distortion will be absent so when there is distortionless transmission system there is no phase distortion but when there is non linear phase system there will be phase distortion just go through these statements and allow you to see this when phase response see the second statement when phase response of a system is linear then phase distortion is absent and when phase response of a system is non linear then phase distortion is present so students i just want to conclude this distortionless transmission that whenever we have a distortionless transmission two aspects are important yeah what is that magnitude response should be constant and phase response must be linear so thank you students that's all from my side in this concept coffee with concept and we will meet again in the next uh, next video with some new concept thank you jai hind jai